Well, if you're thinking of moving to Arizona, I thought I would share with you my experience. I've lived here 24 years. I moved here in 1996. So I'm going to tell you the good and the bad and the ugly, what I love about living here, and I've lived most of the time in Chandler. I lived a little bit in Fountain Hills and in North Central Phoenix, so I've been all over the valley. But uh, most of my experience has been down in the Southeast Valley, uh, Chandler, Arizona. So a little history about me. Um, I had a corporate job. I came out here and transferred out here from upstate New York. I worked for Oro Eat Bread and came out here as a regional sales manager. Prior to that, I was in Southern California, east of LA in uh, the Rancho Cucamonga area. And then I worked and grew up in the Seattle area. So I moved a lot corporately. So when I took the job in Arizona, I was living in Rochester, New York. I'd already lived in Albany for only 13 months and Rochester for a year and a half. The job came open out here that I liked. So I came out. So I knew I didn't want to commute because I had a commute from hell in Los Angeles. It seemed like it took two hours to go anywhere. So I didn't want to do that again. So my office was going to be by Interstate 10 and Chandler Boulevard. And so I wanted an easy commute, you know, 10, 15 minutes max. Wanted to be able to, if I wanted to go home for lunch, do that. Um, even though I had a sales job and I traveled all over the state, I just didn't want to live in my car anymore. So I concentrated my home search on the Ahwatukee area and Chandler. Well, in 96, there was a lot of new construction going on. This place was exploding. And there were also a lot of, you know, cow fields out there, a lot of dairy farms. So, um, there was just home development showing up everywhere. So it didn't take us long to discover that we were gonna to gravitate towards new construction versus a resale home. And we didn't wanna look outside of Chandler or Ahwatukee. And I say Ahwatukee because that was also close to my office. So we had a real estate agent and she took us around in her car and she was referred to be me uh, by my dad's uh, company. He was a, um, he, he had a brokerage in Port Angeles, Washington, a Coldwell banker. So I always had dad find me an agent in a referral. Uh, this particular agent, uh, it did not go well. So I had a really good one in Rochester, New York, and the guy in Albany, uh, the transaction was great. Uh, he took good care of us, as did Southern California. So I came in expecting that, that I would have a good agent. And she, I don't want to say she was bad, but she was inherently lazy. And I don't think she really knew what she was doing. I told my dad I thought she had the two greatest qualities she needed to be a realtor in Chandler. And that was she had a car and gas. Because that's all she did was just drive us around the new developments. So we looked at Ahwatukee and I quickly felt that I wasn't going to do that. Because at the time, Ahwatukee was called the largest cul-de-sac in the world. So you could get in by Ray Road or Chandler Boulevard and it circled around and it was a two lane road and I didn't want any part of that. Plus, we loved the model home that we were looking at. It was on this beautiful hill with amazing views. And then when we drove down to the development saw where the house was, I lost any interest in that home at all. So I bought in Ocotillo, a 3,500 square foot house with a basement. Came out here with three boys. My youngest was almost four, going to turn four in April. We moved out here in March. And then I had a, a seven-year-old and a 10-year-old. So moving at that age was, was pretty easy for them. So we get out here and as we're looking for homes, um, we, we settled on this house Nocatillo and it was a spec home. So if I had to do over again, I wouldn't pick that particular lot because it backed up against uh, uh, Jacaranda and Alma School and ended up being very noisy and hard to sell when it comes time to sell. But we paid $212,000 for it. I put down a $2,400 earnest money on the home. And I made the earnest money check out to the title company. Well, the agent, who was my agent, I noticed when we went to the model home and I signed the documents, my agent looked at me and said, well, you'll be dealing with her from now on. And I said, no, I prefer to deal with you. You're my agent. And she really, she looked at me and she was puzzled. So what happened was it was Beezer Homes um, and they said they wanted me to give them 10% down and the check to me made out to Beezer Homes. That didn't make any sense to me. Um, this wasn't my first real estate rodeo. And so I said, well, no, I'm, I gave you a 1% earnest money check and I want it held at the title company. 
So every week, Rick, where's the check? Where's the check? So I just kind of had to pretend it was being held up by corporate. I go, well, it's, it's being held up because the corporate move, they paid a lot of my, they paid pretty much all of my real estate expenses except the down payment. But um, I was selling my house in New York. So I was telling them there was a bit of a delay. But this real estate agent didn't understand why I didn't want my check made out to Beezer Homes and not held by a title company. Because if anything happened to Beezer Homes, I lose twenty, you know, two thousand dollars. She didn't even, you know, fight for me on that behalf. I literally did not hear from her until three days before closing. Even though I tried calling her and reaching out, I didn't hear from her until then. So I'm very sensitive to um, the needs of people buying new homes and uh, the communication that you need. So anyway, taking that aside, talking about moving to Arizona. Um, now keep in mind, I'm from the Northwest where it rains like crazy. Lived in Southern California where I was used to heat and then, uh, upstate New York, uh, cold weather, um, and humidity in the summertime. So when I came to Arizona, I was looking at the average daily temperatures that were listed and I came out here in March and I was seeing temperatures in June and July that were saying like 115, 114. And I couldn't wrap my head around what that was going to feel like. You know, I was going to take the manly approach, go, oh, I'll probably handle that pretty well. I'm actually looking forward to it. And uh, to this day, 24 years later, I am not used to that heat. So it's brutal uh, starting in June and it just hangs in all summer. And um, it's sunny all the time. In fact, my three and a half year old, when he got here, he had left a preschool in New York where every day they told him, when you get up in the morning, open the window and say what kind of a day it is. So he don't know. And he goes, it's a sunny day. And then he go, it's a cloudy day. It's a snowy day. It's a rainy day. Well, after five days in Arizona, he opens a window and he goes, it's a sunny, you know, dad, I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the weather wasn't changing, so he got bored real quick. We ended up living in a, uh, it's over by the Chandler Mall. There was a, kind of like a two-bedroom um, room hotel uh, with the five of us until it was time to move into this house. And that was, that was rough, crowded. Had to eat out every night. This hotel didn't have a restaurant. There was no mall. There was, we had to drive to Tempe. We had to drive all over the place to find a place to eat. There wasn't a lot going on there. We didn't have the freeway systems. When looking for a home then, we didn't have the internet. So you relied on the agent a lot. Occasionally, we would pick up one of those real estate magazines that you saw in the grocery store. We'd flip through it and say, what about this one? Because <clears throat> there was no internet. So you couldn't search for homes. There was no such thing as Zillow. So you had to rely on your agent a lot. Loved the house, moved in, everything's great. Um, learning the area was, um, was challenging, not really challenging because the roads are laid out very well in, uh, the Phoenix Valley. So, you know, they're either North, South, East, or West. So you've got avenues on the West side and you got streets on the East side. So that made it easy, but getting from Chandler to Scottsdale, there was no freeway at the time. You had the limp up price road and it seemed like it just took forever. Scottsdale was like, like that was just an all day trip to us. I mean, to, to go up there, we just, so we didn't go much. Downtown uh, was easy, but when I got here in 96, there's really no reason to go downtown. There wasn't much going on. Now downtown's vibrant. It's all kinds of cool stuff to see. You can get anywhere from here now. You've got new freeways, the 202, the 303. Getting to Scottsdale's easy. It's just a straight shot up the 101. So the freeway system here is fantastic. The other thing I like is there are no mosquitoes here. I am mosquitoes' favorite flavor. I used to have to dress long sleeve and spray myself with off to take the trash out in Rochester, New York. So I was relieved to get out here and see that I was not, I could sit outside and bugs wouldn't eat me. That's a plus. Now, when we get really hot in the summer, we get really excited when it gets below 90 degrees almost as excited as people do in the Pacific Northwest when the sun finally comes out. Everybody's in a great mood when the sun comes out. Everybody's really happy down here when it gets below 90 degrees after a brutal summer. But what happens to you is your blood vessels move to the outside of your skin to attempt to cool you off when it's really hot. So when the temperature changes and it gets to 60, we are all freaking freezing. And you can tell the difference between the locals and the people visiting from Michigan just by watching what they wear. 
the locals are walking into a Target store wearing a down jacket when it's 70 degrees. The locals are freezing to death. The people from Michigan are still wearing tank tops and shorts and enjoying every minute of it. So you do acclimate to the heat, but it does affect you when it gets colder. And don't get me wrong, it does get cold here, but not very long. And you're going to laugh at me when I say it's cold, but we've had 22 degree days um, in the wintertime. You have to wrap your plants so that they don't, so they don't freeze and die. So it comes occasionally and maybe lasts one or two weeks. So you will experience some cold weather. You can drive an hour and a half from here and get into some great snow up in the Payson area or two hours and go to Flagstaff and go skiing. So there are some great recreational opportunities. The people, uh, it's really diverse out here. Rochester, New York was probably my favorite city. I lived in a suburb called Fairport. They had what was known as the Kodak culture. And the people out there were absolute gems. I mean, it's anything you needed, you got it. It was great. Um, everybody was overly friendly. I loved Rochester. It was hard to leave it. I get out here a little bit of California-ish in that everybody's got remote controls for their garage doors. So, you know, you... You push the button, the door goes up, you pull in. You know, if you see the neighbor, you might wave. But, you know, they didn't mingle like we did in New York. You know, one time I came home in New York, I had three feet of snow, and the neighbor goes, park in my driveway and you can borrow my snowblower because I didn't have one yet. And here it seems like everybody opens up their garage door, drives in, and they just don't talk to each other. Uh, California was worse that way. But... Um, People eventually warmed up, either that or I got used to it. So we got to know our neighbors pretty well. And we had a lot of block parties and swimming parties. And the kids had a great time. Speaking of kids, school districts, again, there was no way to check out school districts in 96. We didn't have the internet, so we couldn't do it. So we had to rely on word of mouth. And the word of mouth was that Chandler School District was great. We had Jacobson Elementary, Bogle Junior High School, and Hamilton High School. Loved all three of them. Uh, Hamilton was great. It was a big school, a little concerned about it being that big. But what I discovered is they had something for everybody. So if, you're, if your kid was into sports, they had that. Uh, theater, arts, uh, media, you name it. And there was something for everybody. So it was a great big school, but my kids all had like a circle of friends that they hung out with and, uh, and with different interests. So it was, you know, and they've all done well since they graduated from Hamilton. Um, a lot of activities to do here, a lot of clubs. We had the kids and Boy Scouts. Um, it was easy to find a church to go to. So uh, community-wise, I liked it. I love Chandler. I moved away. Um, unfortunately, I got divorced in 2006. So I ended up moving um, to Tempe for a bit and then North Central Phoenix and Fountain Hills. Um, Fountain Hills was okay. The views were great, uh, unbelievably good. But the sidewalks roll up at 8 o'clock. I mean, and there, it just dies. There's nothing to do out there. So if you like views, it's great. North Central Phoenix was fabulous. Downtown is great. Um, the schools, um, not as good as what you see in the Southeast Valley. Um, and so we, ran, we, we didn't look into that when we moved here. We had no intention of going towards the city. We wanted to be in a suburb. So I like being out here. Now, Chandler has changed tremendously. It was nothing but cow fields when I moved here. And now those cow fields have turned into um, um, the new Wells Fargo Bank, Northrop Grumman, uh, the Price Corridor, downtown Chandler. Just kind of used to be a wide spot in the road. Now there's all kinds of things happening down there. A really vibrant craft brewing um, community down there. Great nightlife. They do a lot of um, festivals and open air markets. This is pre-COVID, so we're waiting for those things to kind of open up right now. But a lot to do in the area. We're only a five to five and a half hour drive to the beaches of San Diego, and I love that. I love being able to drive to San Diego. Also, a little uh, gem is going into Mexico and going to Rocky Point, Puerto Panasco, if you look it up on the map. And it's only three and a half hours from here. So you can get some nice condos on the beach down there and enjoy. We call it the ocean of Arizona. So it's uh, a nice fishing community. Shrimp are about this big. I don't mean about that big. And a great place to spend a weekend if you want to get away. Sometimes it's a little tough getting across the border, coming home. It can take forever. If you're going on a holiday weekend, be prepared. Um, you also need to be prepared if you're going up to 
uh, Flagstaff in the summertime, especially around June, uh, before the rains start, we tend to have a few brush fires on I-17. So you get the family in the car and you drive along, you get going, and then there's a 10 mile back up and you're stuck in your car in the heat. So you have to plan your trips to Flagstaff uh, carefully and make sure you got a lot of water in the car, you have a full tank of gas and be prepared for anything because it happens. It also happened when I uh, used to go to Payson a lot, turn around and come back, the road would be closed, we'd have to go another way. Instead of an hour and a half trip, it turns into six. So you do run into those occasional hiccups every once in a while in the summer, either from fires or accidents, because it's really only a two to four lane road going up to Flagstaff, same with Payson. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done yet, done that yet, and give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the area, shoot me an email or make a comment below. Thanks.